welcome. This is Dee from Crystal Crest with Dee. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Yay! My favourite time of the year. I'm going to start off the Christmas season with doing a Christmas cross stitch. This is a winter sampler Joy Sunday that I got from VIP Cross Stitch. And this is one of a series of four different seasons that I've been doing. And I'm so excited to get started on winter. Very, very cute. This is a 14 count stamped eight o'clock. It is 27 by 27 centimeters. So it's a beautiful little size. Joy Sunday comes in this beautiful bag and the instructions if you need them are on the back. So I love these little projects, these seasons ones. They're so good. They're manageable. You can take them with you wherever you go because they're just nice and portable, nice and small. There's your cover sheet. I just love this. I think it's so beautifully set out. It encompasses so much about Christmas that I love. Your beautiful Christmas tree, your wreath, Christmas cookies, candy canes, stockings, your fireplace, snowman, mittens, Santa's bag, and Santa and his reindeer. It's just, look at the reindeer. It's so cute. And these beautiful snowflakes. Absolutely gorgeous. This is going to be so much fun to do. So in your kit, you've got your colors, a graph, Oops. got your graph and your canvas. So this particular one does have backstitch. It has 20 colors in full stitch and it's got three colors in backstitch. So there's not a lot of backstitch on this one. It's very simple. This is a perfect beginner's project. Uh, very easy to do, very colorful, and very little backstitch. And this is your canvas. So it's just a perfect little size. So cute. And it is just beautifully printed. If you sort of look at those squares there, you can see how beautifully printed they are. So that's what it looks like, stamped eight of cloth. Your edges are hemmed. And then it's 107 by 107 stitches wide and high. And you've got all the symbols printed down the bottom there. They're beautifully printed, nice and clear. So you can see that is really, really nice. Looks so good, winter. So your back stitching will be, there's a bit of back stitching with the mittens. And let me see if I can find it. Your mittens are clearly marked. Uh, there's edging around the snowman. That's because you've got white, that'd be white uh, threads there. And that's just to kind of separate the canvas color from your the white of your threads. And then you've got the ornaments. Oop, where are we? The wires holding the ornaments. That is all you need to backstitch on. Oh, there's a little bit on the candy cane there. Again, to separate that white from the background. Oh, and Santa. <laughs> I keep finding more. Uh, yeah, so not a lot. But that's what it looks like on the canvas. So that looks really, really good. Really sharp and clear. Gosh, look how clear that. Really bright. So that's going to be no trouble at all. Be a lot of fun. Beautiful. Have a look at those colors. So your colors come pre-sorted on this card and they are just gorgeous. Check out those Christmas colors. Red, green, blue, yellow, white. Really pretty. Nice and long and nice and soft. Beautiful threads. And they're very easy identifiable along there. And of course, in your kit, you get two needles. Really pretty. Gee, they feel nice, nice and soft. So there you go. That is my next project that I will be working on. My first Christmas project. Very excited to get started on this. So what I will be doing is I'll be jumping straight in and getting this started and um, I will follow up with a review video to let you know how I went 
and to show you the finished product and any issues I had, that sort of thing. So um, I'm going to get started on this one and I will see you on the other side. Okay, so I'm almost finished with my little cross stitch and it's coming up absolutely beautifully. So I have finished doing all the full stitches and I have done some of the back stitching so you can see Christmas there. I've done that one and I've done the light gray around the candy cane, around the candles. I've done these strings there for the baubles. I have done, where are we, mittens and a little bit around the snowman. So that light gray that's around the white, all that does is sort of give you a clear distinction between, because it's white on white, so it gives you that sort of clear uh, distinction between what's stitched and what isn't. It just helps it sort of stand out a little bit more. I've done a little bit on the bag. And all I have to do now is this little bit along Santa's beard here. So uh, because that's white, the back stitching color is gray, which is this color here. And of course, I was thinking, you know, I should probably have done this bit on camera with you because you could see it and you're not going to be able to see the gray very well. So um, I thought, gee, I didn't think that through, but that's okay. So what I will do is I will go ahead and I will back stitch around his beard there, but I'll do it in red so you can see it and then I will pull it out later and redo it because it's only a very small section. So I'm going to do it in the red so you can see it. And I'll show you on the graph. Where are we? Where are we? It's just that orange line there. So when you have a look at the chart, you've got down here, Orange is color number seven, which is 644 DMC, which is what I've got. So it is a nice light gray color. And being a 14 count Ada cloth, you need one strand to do the back stitching. So I will get started on this one. What I will point out to you before I get going is that these black ones here, uh, I'm quite lazy. I already had the black going and I thought I am not going to re thread my needle with one strand just to do these lines. So I've done it in two strands. Uh, I do that sometimes just because I'm a bit lazy. Uh, but anyway, we'll get back to Santa's beard. Okay, so what I might do is... I'll try and see if I can fit him in there. There we go. Okay. Now the camera is going to bounce a little bit. I do apologize. It's just the way the camera's set up. I will get my red, but it's supposed to be gray. Now, a bit of a disclaimer, when I cross stitch, I can be quite messy and inefficient and fiddly and all that sort of thing. I'm by no means an expert at this. I have been doing it a very long time, but uh, it, this just works for me. So uh, if it helps you at all, that's great. If you think it's way too fiddly, I agree. Uh, but this is kind of how I do it, you know old habits, etc. So I'm just threading my needle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look here at the orange. Now when I do back stitching, um, normally when you sort of do a stitch, you come up and then you go back down and then you thread your little tail through at the back and that holds it nice and secure. Uh, I find that when you have one strand, it slips through easier. So um, I don't actually do it that way because my threads tend to come undone. Maybe I pull too tight, I'm not sure. But So I just kind of secure it a little bit differently. So when I go to do my uh, back stitching, I look for a corner. So whether it's a corner that way or a corner that way, and that's where I start and I start right in the middle. And then I'll show you how I secure it at the back. I'm sure there's easier ways, but I thought, look, I'll show you how I do it. Uh, and you can say, wow, that's how I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so I'm just going to choose this corner here. So I've got that little corner there. And I'm just going to pull that thread through. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail behind. A little bit of a tail. And then I'm going to do my first stitch. So I'm going to go, it doesn't really matter which way you go. I might just go up. My square, poking through, 
and then I'm going to come up at the other end of my little on my L it is if I can find this silly hole there it is so I'm going to come up and I'm going to flip her over and because if you can see there's a quite a bit of a gap there that's why it slips through so all I do is it naturally the loop turns around that way twists and I just flip the loop over easier said than done and come here you I pull my tail through so that's kind of how I do it so I still loop the tail at the on the back but I just twist the loop just to kind of give it that extra security I think it's probably because I'm a bit heavy-handed and I do pull tightly but I just find that works for me and then I am going to go there and I finished my L so that's how I start it but back stitching is really really easy you just sort of work out what bit works good for you um, so I'm just gonna have a look at my little chart here if I can see it so it sort of shows it goes down one and then it goes all the way up the top there so I'm just gonna follow my stitches and do my back stitching so there is one more down here so I'm just gonna pop him there pull him through and that's nice and secure and we can go down through there that's why it's called back stitching so up and then back and pull her through and then I'm going to come up to where I started and I'm going to zing up the top there so I'm just going to go through that same hole so it's going to look like chicken scratches on the back but that's okay because it's on the back You're not going to see it anyway and I'm going to go through the next hole so I do it square by square there are two different ways to do it some people prefer to do it square by square other people uh, prefer to do it they come up here and they do one whole length like do the three squares in one stitch but I find when you do that it, it is gappy and I, I don't like the look of it it's personal preference really there is no right or wrong way but I do it square by square and I just go into the next square and go down I'm going to come up the next square pull her up and then I'm going to back over to that hole that's one line then I'm going to come back up through this one because I'm going to continue upwards pull her through and then I'm going to go to this hole here too easy and then up this way and then back down again now if you have a back stitching section that kind of goes say it goes up there and then it wants you to go a little bit in here as well what I do is I kind of go up there and I skip and skip and then I come back uh, but I'll show you how I do that on another project when I get to it but you can sort of skip over and then come back again uh, it's really it doesn't matter as long as the back stitching is along the side of that stitch your full stitch that's all that matters go across there and it's, that's all that's how it is nice and easy and then I'm going to come up to this hole because we've got two more stitches Get there back through that hole and up and that's the last of it too easy and that's back stitching so I go square by square but some people sort of they come up here and they do that in one whole stitch and do you like where the two they do it one whole stitch that is completely up to you I used to do it that way but I found it was a little bit gappy for my liking so I just do it stitch by stitch and that's how you back stitch 
very easy to do. And then when you uh, tie off, it's just um, threading, weaving through the back uh, like you normally do. So that's nice and easy to do. And sometimes actually, without the risk of um, confusing you, uh, because again with the one strand, sometimes it doesn't sit tight at the back. And so I'll sort of thread it through one loop and then I'll do a loop and then across. But it's usually the starting one is the, is the issue. And that's how it looks on the back. So the same thing with um, like Christmas up there. Hang on a minute, let me bring them in here. That's a back stitching from Christmas. So it kind of goes everywhere. Um, but again, you're not looking at the back, you're looking at the front. And so I've just tied it off there. It's my first stitch there. And then when I finished off, I just finished off here. And then I just threaded it, weaved it through these guys um, that were already there. So nice and easy. And that's how you backstitch. It's very easy to do. And the effect is really nice. So if you didn't want to backstitch any of these, you don't really have to. I mean, you could leave that out if you wanted to, but it really does make it look much nicer if you do backstitch. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to pull all that out and do the correct color. But I just wanted to show you how I do backstitching. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing and you could see what I was doing. Uh, but it is very easy to do and it's very effective. So, um, and even though, you know, you think, oh, that's gray, you can't see it very well. It kind of does make a difference when you wash your um, fabric. You can sort of see it a bit easier. But that's how I do my back stitching. So I'm going to finish, pull that out, do it the right color, and then I'll come back again and you can have a look at the completed project. Okay, so I'm all finished. Had a lot of fun doing this. I love the colors and I love how it turned out. I just, I love everything about it. The beautiful um, Santa Santa's bag and you've got your presents and I just I think these are my favorite the little reindeer and the Santa's face I just absolutely love it Christmas tree turned out really really good and I love the fireplace uh, and the stocking and that it looks really effective so um, this actually took me a lot longer than I thought it was going to I figured it was pretty simple there's not a lot going on in there but what I didn't realize is that there's a lot going on in the Christmas tree and especially that wreath so the wreath Kind of took me the longest to do. The rest of it was pretty good. But there was just a lot of stop starting and um, almost confetti going on in there because of the lights and all the different colors that they wanted in there. But um, other than that, uh, once I finished off the, Chris the Christmas wreath, then I could just kind of go and knock myself out. So I thought it turned out really, really good quite impressed. I'll zoom you in so you can have a closer look. So in we go. Okay, so we have up there, so you can see there's a lot going on with that wreath. And so what I did with the wreath, uh, actually with the whole thing, was I started with the lighter colors first. So I did the white first, and then I did the uh, pale yellow, and then I did the yellow, and then I did the orange, and then I just kind of whatever you know, kind of panned out. I did the rest of the colors. So when you sort of get into this sort of thing, so what I did was uh, these bits that were have like this little, there's a red, there's a red, like an orangey red. There's like one here, one there. I went and I did those first. So by doing that, you're gonna stretch that thread over on the back. And what's gonna happen is when you actually stitch the rest of the colors, you're going to be covering up those um, strands that you have at the back. So, and that just makes it more secure as well. So that's what I did. I kind of did the ones that was little bits, like the white and the yellow and that um, orangey red. I did all those first. And then I came around with the other colors and filled them in that way. So that worked out really, really well. And then you've got these little bit of snow, which I really, really like that. The tree turned out really nice. I really like how that turned out. And these, I think these are cookies. I'm thinking, why are they brown? But I think they're cookies. They were easy to do. The lettering Christmas, that's kind of my only drawback, was that it was a pity it wasn't actually printed on the canvas so that you could follow that instead of having to keep referring to your chart for every stitch that you do. 
Uh, it's no big deal really, but it just would make it so much easier, especially if you're a beginner and you haven't done a lot of backstitching and that sort of thing. So that's kind of my only negative, but I think the lettering turned out really good. And I love these little um, sections here where you've got like the, the sort of checkerboard effect there and there as well. I think it turned out really, really cool. So when I got to like this section here and you've got those little bits of white in there, those little white dots, I did those first. And then again, you just stitch over it with the other main colors as you go along. So the way I kind of tackled this one was that I did the white first and then I did all the sections that were connecting first. So I did the, uh, not connecting, sorry, uh, I did these red blocks, the lighter red first, because you're going to have traveling threads at the back that go around the back and then you stitch over it with the other one. So I did the light red, then I did the dark red and then I did the black. That's kind of how I did it. It really doesn't matter how you do it, but that's, if you want to know how I kind of tackled it, that's how I did it. Uh, the bag turned out really good. I love that. I love the back stitching on it as well. I think that looked really cool. And the snowman looks awesome. It was just really good. Really good to do. And of course, lettering winter. That gorgeous candy cane up in the corner there. And these beautiful uh, snowflakes. And I like this too. I think that's really effective. And again, with that one, I just did the little dots first. And then stitched over with the main color after that. But that turned out really awesome. And the back stitching, like with the um, lighter color, that gray, I pulled out the red, like I said I was going to do, and then I've just replaced it with the gray. It'll be more noticeable once it's washed. But that turned out awesome, didn't it? And I'll show you the back. Got some back there. You can really see how I kind of stretch the threads across with the snowflakes on that one. So it's not too bad. down this way could be neater but eh, what are you gonna do doesn't matter yeah so that looks really really good okay so I'll zoom you back out again and flip her back over it's absolutely gorgeous just love it I love the series actually that's just really really effective okay so I'll show you the leftover threads I have plenty of threads there's no issue. I wasn't getting close on any of them. There's lots of threads there. They're very good quality. Beautiful and soft. Nice and long. You can see there I had lots left over. Lots and lots and lots. So there was no sort of worrying that, oh man, am I going to have enough? There's heaps. Beautiful threads though. But look at those colors. Aren't they gorgeous? So pretty. Lots and lots of threads left over. So there you go, there's my beautiful little winter sampler. I love this series. Can't wait to get started on the other ones and uh, frame them all up together. But they're coming along nicely and it's a nice little project. It's not too big, it's not too much. It's a, a great beginner's project, especially if you want something that you can kind of really sink your teeth into. It's not too simple. This is a great project. And you got a bit of back stitching in there as well, but not too much, so absolutely gorgeous. And the symbols were very, very easy to read. I didn't have any trouble at all with those symbols. And the canvas is nice and soft. It was just really lovely to stitch. So beautiful. So I'd like to thank VIP Cross Stitch for sending this out to me for review. I absolutely love it. Uh, I will have a link to this in the description box below. And I will also link up my tutorial that I have on how to wash a stamped cross stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and wash this. And then I will include a picture at the end of this video so you can have a look at it, um, the comparison of it washed versus unwashed. And as I said, I will link my uh, how to wash a stamped cross stitch tutorial video in the description box below. So thank you so much for watching my video and I will catch you next time. Bye.